It's time for This Week in WordPress, episode number 148, entitled, What are Contributor Tools? It was recorded on Monday, the 1st of February, 2021. My name's Nathan Wrigley, and I'll be joined, as I am each and every week, by Paul Lacey, my co-host. And this week, I'll be joined by Michelle Frechette and Bernard Grinot as we talk about the WordPress news over the last seven days. There's plenty to talk about. WordPress roadmap update. We've got full site editing coming down the pipe. That's mooted for June 2021 in WordPress 5.8. Josepha Hayden Chomposi talks about the big picture goals for the project in 2021. Automatic have launched the new blank canvas WordPress theme, which will be very good if you're using launch landing pages and so on. Elementor 3.1 has also released. Find out what's in that. The plugin team have discovered that plugin authors are updating your auto update plugin settings. That's a mouthful, but it's been decided that has now got to stop. We've also got a new plugin which is entitled Launch with Words. It's a plugin to help you create a schedule for your writing over the coming year. WordFest 2020 have released their threat report as well, and Apple takes a shot at tracking on iOS. It's all coming up on This Week in WordPress. This Week in WordPress is brought to you this week by AB Split Test. Do you want to set up your A-B split tests in record time, like in a couple of minutes? Use your existing pages and test anything against anything else. Buttons, images, headers, rows, anything. And the best part is, it works with Elementor, Beaver Builder, and the WordPress Block Editor. Check it out and get a free demo at absplittest.com. Hello there once again. Nice to have you with us. Very nice to see a couple of people coming in right off the bat. It's This Week in WordPress once more. I'm joined by three guests this week, as always, by Paul Lacey down there. If you're listening to this on the audio, you won't have a clue, but it's a bit like Celebrity Squares back in the 80s on British television. (laughs) (laughs) On top of each other. And uh, we're also joined by Bernard Grinot, who's over on that side. I nearly did the finger point slightly wrong. And we're also awesome. it's a new place for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. We can move you around on the new StreamYard platform. Ah, I'm really getting it wrong. And over there, uh, to the bottom right, we have Michelle Frechette. Um, very quick, uh, little elevator pitch from each of you, if you want to just introduce yourselves very quickly. Um, so first, should we start with Paul. Sure. Yeah. So Paul Laser here. I'm an independent WordPress consultant. That was very pithy. Thank you, Paul. Mm-hmm. And Bernard? Don't have a website yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can build it. On, <laughs> working on websites too here and always educating about pots and possible use cases and stuff around it. We'll try and Go sneak enough. some of that pods goodness oh, in. Oh, and selling yeah. hot chocolate. I mean, And, of course, uh, Bernard <laughs> has a completely alternative life in the hot chocolate industry, which is just <laughs> lovely. And because who doesn't like hot chocolate? Raise your hand. No hands go up. Um, and Michelle, tell us about yourself. Yes, good morning here in Rochester, New York. It's snowing, and I am the head of, uh, cu- head of customer success for GiveWP and a pretty strong advocate for the WordPress community. Thank you so much, uh, all of you. We are, well, I'll just put a couple of things on the screen, but I'll explain them to anybody listening to this on the audio. If you ever want to come and make comments, you've got to go to wpbuilds.com forward slash live. Now, strangely, it, it happened this week, apparently, at some point during the last 48 hours. Uh, Google are now no longer allowing you to embed uh, YouTube comments on third-party sites. I don't know if that's a temporary glitch, but there's a bit of chatter in the community around uh, YouTube saying that it stopped. So if you go to that page, you'll have to click the red button and it will open up a new tab where you can make those comments. And we appreciate anybody who makes the effort to do that. The other alternative is to go to wpbuilds.com forward slash Facebook. That's our Facebook group. You have to be a member. So that's no good if you are not currently a member, but you can make comments over there on the post. Just search for this week in WordPress. Speaking of this week in WordPress, it comes from WP Builds. I'll just very quickly tell you a little bit about that. WP Builds, we started back in 2016. It was me and David Wormsley. It seems to have grown a little bit since then, which is really nice. But we are a kind of like a WordPress network. We talk about WordPress more or less exclusively, wpbuilds.com. If you want to keep in touch with what we do, there is a button here, subscribe. 
this page has all sorts of email lists that you can subscribe to, but also links to podcast players if you wanted to get things automatically put into your podcast player. And of course, our Facebook group, 2800, very polite and friendly WordPressers over at that place. Finally, a couple of things about the newsletter. If you actually go to this link, it's difficult for me to show you, but it's this one. It's the This Week in WordPress newsletter. We've kind of farmed that out to a third-party service called Curated. But if you want to just subscribe over there just to the newsletter, you can do that. And this is where we post those newsletters, including the content that you're about to watch. Um, what else have we got? We've got a deals page. Last one, wpbuilds.com forward slash deals. If you've got a product or service that you're out after this week you never know it might be on here if you click the big yellow button you can search and filter and so on and so anyway that's who we are wpbuilds.com but enough of that today we're here not to talk about wp builds we're here to talk about wordpressy stuff and we've got well potentially 10 things to go i feel 10 is probably probably too many paul i'm really sorry i've had you entirely covered up this entire time <laughs> That's very rude of me, but I'm going to do one more. Covering the WordPress news <laughs> for the week commencing the 25th of and, January. And, and covering gone. Paul. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, Paul. I was elsewhere. My concentration was diverted in another sphere. So, yeah, sorry about that. Um, You're forgiven. Thank you. Thank you. So Paul's going to lead on half of these because he's the, the co-host of this show, and I'll lead for the first one and a bunch throughout. So this first piece, as we often do, we rely on WP Tavern for the news that we talk about. And this is a, an article by Sarah Gooding entitled WordPress Roadmap Update, full site editing targeted for 5.8 release in June 2021. So a little over, what is that, five months or so from now, we should have a release of the, the ability to do full site editing. You would kind of hope that that would be the end of this discussion and it's, that would be it. But the, the the article goes on to sort of discuss the the problems with actually figuring out what all this means. You know, what does it mean to have full site editing? What does it mean to say that it will be ready at those dates? And essentially, if you read this article, you'll discover that it's it's a sort of it's a work in progress. There are a bunch of things which still need to be achieved. If you go over to um, track and have a look, it looks like some of them are getting ticked off, which is quite nice, but we're not sure. Some of them are fairly crucial still. Um, and so, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch to go, but we are almost, almost at the point where full site editing without a page builder, without anything apart from just WordPress vanilla core will be possible. It's a very exciting development, I think. <laughs> okay, well, okay. the excitement is, is Palpable. just amazing, though, isn't it? I mean, the, yeah. the reaction. Yeah. 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 Um, no, it is. We can, it is. It is exciting, actually. And uh, we can probably move the link that, if anyone's watching, can see there's a link in, on the screen that says updated roadmap, which leads on to our second item, which is kind of right. the beginning, the same item as well. But we actually last week had Birgit Pauli Haas. Is that correct? That's Hack. Right. Hack. Birgit Pauli Hack on uh, right. as a as a guest who 100% changed my mindset a bit. 100% changed my mindset a bit. If that's yeah, a thing. That, I like the way she did on, that. She was yeah, like, yeah. So like maybe, 99% maybe she's 50 or something. Yeah. Changed <laughs> my mindset a lot. I don't know. She definitely changed my mindset on the whole full site editing and the whole Gutenberg project. I'm still always looking at this with a kind of eye of constructive criticism and always looking at it from my own user persona point of view as a web designer, web developer type person looking for those tools. But she did give me a good insight and everybody who was watching or listening a good insight into how some of these things work behind the scenes. Mm. And as a result, like I say, I've got a more of an open mind about this whole project now. But like I say, I'm still a little bit um, holding out some criticism where needed if I, if I feel that I can make some comments. And the nice thing was she introduced me to uh, some of the people in the actual team who are working on full site editing. And I've got an opportunity to test it out properly and follow the testing guidelines, which I'm gonna hopefully do this week. So I'm talking to someone there. So I'll be able to have a really close look myself and see what's going on there. But the article that Nathan was reading out there leads on to um, a post on WordPress.org by Josepha. Uh, what is it? What is Josepha's full name? 
She's Josepha Hayden Chomposi. Uh huh. Okay. So Josepha's article here is called "Big Picture Goals 2021," and this is this is the um, a kind of summary of the roadmap for 2021. She, I, I think she's edited this post possibly from the beginning because I know that she got a lot of pushback in the comments because this is a controversial subject. Everybody's got an opinion about this. So she may have updated this a little bit, but she stated that the goals for 2021 are intentionally broad and they're intentionally incomplete. There's three main things that she's identified on the big picture. Uh, I'll start with the one that I don't really understand called contributor tools. This is number three. Uh, contributor tools, decrease the manual overhead of maintenance work for teams through better tooling. I actually have no idea what that means, but I assume it's like some kind of internal goal to make the workflow better within the, um, the internal teams working on the Gutenberg project and WordPress in general. Uh, the second one is something we've mentioned before, which is Learn WP, which is a really nice initiative to help people self-learn uh, the ins and outs of WordPress on all sorts of levels, whether it's third-party tools, plugins, or core WordPress. So that's that's one of their big priorities for 2021, and they want to commit to keep putting resources on there, videos, lesson plans, all that kind of stuff. But obviously, the one that uh, is probably the, the the talking point is the full site editing plan. Now, the timeline uh, that Nathan may have already mentioned is that they want to have a, an MVP, a minimum viable product of full site editing within the Gutenberg plugin by Sorry, April 2021. Oh, sorry. And and also, so a minimum viable product in the Gutenberg plugin by April 2021, and that the actual full site editing capabilities to some extent will be in the core of WordPress by version 5.8, which as I understand it, I think is scheduled in through around mid-June, mid to end yeah. June. Yeah. Yep. So it seems that what's happening here is that they've they're obviously thinking ahead to when uh, they will want to release a new version of a theme, for instance, 2022 theme or something like that. And the way I see it is that they're looking ahead a year and saying, wouldn't it be great to have full site editing to some extent in core in six months time? Then we've got another six months perhaps to get a full site edited new theme to represent WordPress in a 2022 version of the theme. That's my guess on where these timelines have come from at a broad sense. Uh, she does say it's totally broad. I'm sure it's going to change, but that appears to be the plan. Gutenberg, full site editing April, full site editing in core WordPress to some extent by June this year. So that is soon. Yeah, really soon. The... Yeah. Um... The, yeah, thank you, Michelle. Appreciate that. There was uh, somebody, I think, grinding some coffee beans or something in your mm. office. Yeah, she's nodding. Thank you for muting. That's helpful. Um, the, I think the control, well, not controversy, but the, the, the problem that got highlighted in the comments on this article was that people wanted more clarity on what the MVP aspect of this is. You know, they're aiming for an MVP, but there seemed to be some, um, some misunderstanding of exactly what the MVP was talking about and so i guess um i guess only time will tell but she she's hoping for that by april 2021 and then hopefully in the core version of in wordpress 5.8 but keep keep your eyes peeled i know that there was a pregnant pause when i said this is exciting but i am really genuinely excited by this i do really like the idea that you'll be able to download wordpress and you'll be able to do the whole thing and there'll be that in, enormous hurdle that you've got to overcome either to use the customizer in the theme that you've got or to figure out some css way of doing it suddenly you'll be able to point click drag some things around use a color picker and get something that you like probably within a couple of hours um right off the bat and you know as we all know from page builders it doesn't take too long until you're familiar with the ui and can can manage those things trivially and this is very exciting for me. And good good luck to the team for getting it going. So I will, if I can jump in here real quick, say that I stopped teaching local WordPress classes when Gutenberg came on. Because Interesting. Yeah. every five minutes, it seems like there's updates and new things to learn. <laughs> well, yeah. it's, be, it's yeah. because of that, right? So thank goodness they have the Learn WP uh, at this learn WordPress at the same time, because like at this point it's growing rapidly. It's not my primary job to teach it, of course, you know? And so 
like having that as a side business is no longer a viable option for me yeah. <laughs> because it's growing so quickly, but um, providing the tools for other people to learn, I think is fantastic. Yeah, you've got to feel that if you were in the business of having one of those companies, like let's say WP 101 or video user manuals or something, you would feel like there's no point in producing those videos at the moment because you know that the UI is going to become significantly different mm -hmm. within a month or two months. So I, I get I get what you mean, and hopefully WordPress themselves will will make this Learn WP initiative work. Uh, I don't I regret to say that I don't know who has just posted this comment. They are a Facebook user. If you want to click on the Streamyard link, I know you you may it may be Chris Hughes because he often no that's Ronak. Oh, is it? Oh, hi, hi Ronak. He's um, making the point that he learned his lesson with Gutenberg uh, launch. Oh, there, no, yes, actually, that's not Ronak. <laughs> that is Dave Bloom from oh. of Beaver Builder Group fame. Ah. Thank you, and, Dave. Um, yeah, I, I'm guessing what he's meaning is he's um, he's going to have a cautious approach to anything to do with Gutenberg. You know, <laughs> you've learned your lesson. Okay. Uh, I, I'm right. exactly the same on that. I, I personally, I, I think I'm now more excited about it having talked with Birgit and understand the pace and that this is. It says even in the big picture goals article, right at the top, it says that. There's so many far away North Stars in this 10 year potential project that this really is a potential slow burn. So I am excited. And I'm wondering if three or four years we'll all be using this stuff and really happy with it and saying, I probably should have trusted in them. But you know, Bernard will probably be giggling inside as I'm saying that. <laughs> um, but wild, wild west. I, I, I'm excited, but I'm not jumping in in any commercial way just yet. That's no. for sure. I'm sticking. No. I'm sticking with you know what I'm using, Beaver Builder, and uh, Generate Press, and sticking with those things for the foreseeable, for sure. I don't need to create a new complication in my life at the moment. Let's see mm. where it goes from my perspective. Yeah. So it sounds like yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly the point. Let's see mm. where it where it goes. I mean, we all know why it's there. Um, let's see how that works out. And uh, I think it usually depends on the kind of sites you're building, how important it is for you, because. Uh, you could have done a page in PHP and we use a page builder instead of it. So it's, it's a different use case just for me. And I think especially for the, the mom and pops and, and people who are getting into it, it might make things far easier because they don't need to get to know how WordPress works behind the scenes, which is kind of good and a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what was really interesting about having um, Birgit on last week was that she she really did sort of drag us in, didn't she, Paul? She took took us in and sort of gave us a and we chatted after the episode had finished recording, and she gave us an awful lot of help trying to figure out where all this lies. And I think one of the things that I drew out of that was just the messaging is so hard. You know, the WordPress community, you've actually got to go and find the information about the updates and what's happening and be interested um, so that you're anticipating what the what the forthcoming things are so that the the new menu item or the new bit that they put in the block editor isn't a surprise but that's hard um, you know it's really you've got to go look look at the look at the articles like Joseph has put out you got to go and discover that all for yourself and that's a difficult proposition you know um, I guess uh, I don't know what the what the authority WordPress have to go out mailing or pu putting things in the UI. Not a lot. They tend to steer clear of all of that. Uh, Chris Hughes in the comments makes a lovely point. He says, it's a great recurring revenue for teaching, though. Learn something different <laughs> every time. <laughs> That's yeah, a very call, good point. <laughs> you, could, you could have like a, um, a weekly update uh, for, you know, the new things you can learn in WordPress. You could even call it, I don't know, this week in WordPress or something. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. What a good idea. Yeah. Who should do that? That's, or, that's or, or Gutenberg <laughs> times, you know, there's a whole podcast <laughs> that, that beer gets involved in and that is just the, the, the narrow focus of what they do. It's just the Gutenberg stuff and it keeps them, keeps them busy and they put out a big fat newsletter each week. So, you know, there's a lot to say. I'm going to start a new podcast called Obsolete in WordPress. Things you don't need to know anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's gonna, you're going to be busy. You're going to be so busy. Although, do, do you know what? Nobody will uh, listen. A, no, no, well, that's the, yeah, I guess that's good. If nobody's listening, you've, you've achieved the, the correct audience. The I've got a, I have a, an app that I use that uses Tiny MCE as the editor. And Paul will know what I'm talking about. And it's so 
so immature compared forgive me if you're involved in any way with the tiny mc editor editor just the ability of what gutenberg what i've become used to especially moving things around and pasting in a link and it instantly is pasted into the correct you know you highlight the text click command v on the mac and it turns it into a link and a little pop-up comes up asking you what you want to do with it do you want it to open in a new window and so on it's just brilliant and when all of this fine when the jigsaw pieces all align and the jigsaw's finished 84 years from now we'll be looking back going what were we worried about <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not worried i just uh it's it's, it's the thing i'm missing is this 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 minor use case but it's a huge use case for me about structured content and that's the reason i use pods and that is a thing which is just put away on the side and the side there somewhere and not, not I find it not re really easy to, to have stuff like that in Gutenberg yet, at least, because you can't have a, all those meta informations are just somewhere in the crowded space on the side. It's great for writing content. It is sure. so is. It really is great uh, for writing content. But yeah. for anything else, it feels like kind of, I don't know. Sometimes I just want a few boxes, like a form you fill out. Yeah. And that's, that's, in, that's not in any way taken care of with Gutenberg. I'm guessing this is David again, perhaps. Uh, forgive me, David, I haven't got Facebook open. Somebody who could be David in the comments saying, I think full site editing is going to be good for WP, but user experience wise, what Elementor and Beaver Builder did is much better. Uh, that way, the content and design both act as separate layers right now. It feels they want to be more like Squarespace. Yeah, I guess the I guess the problem is, is that Beaver Builder and Elementor and those page builders, they can just build what they like. And they don't have to worry about people who are not using their product, whereas the WordPress crowd, the WordPress core team, have to worry about everything working, uh, which must be a tall order. Lots of comments coming in. No, it wasn't David Bloom. He says, no, not me. So well, I don't was, know who made that. That was Raunak this time. Oh, okay. Thank yeah, you, Raunak. Okay. We can yeah, see your name now. So that's very good. Modeled. Again, I'll make the point that if you want, if you want us to know who you are, uh, as David has now done, if you click on the link above the episode, there's a StreamYard link, and it enables uh, Facebook to provide your name to us which is helpful okay um are we done with that one should we move on i think so yeah i think so okay. um we dave, segue dave though bloom, nicely uh, don't we we do segue dave dave bloom just to mention dave bloom mm -hmm. um he's got skin in the game here because you know he's got a product called ginger soul and that product is an add-on for beaver builder so i'm sure that dave is you know interested to see where this is going but my opinion anyway is that there's so many WordPress users. WordPress is so huge that you have, you can say, what do you use? And someone will say Squarespace, or they'll say Wix, or they'll say Elementor, or they'll say Beaver Builder, or they'll say WordPress, or they'll say the, the block editor. WordPress itself has about 20 different sub product ways of doing things within itself, whether it's Elementor or Beaver Builder or something like that. I think in the coming years, when I, when I look at the things that they're retiring, from from core WordPress, you know, widgets and the customizer eventually and those kind of things. I think that most of the things that we're using that, are, that aren't the core editor will still work because none of them rely on some of those old things. So I, I, I honestly think that if, we, if, if, we, if we're a person that likes Beaver Builder or we're a person that likes that Elementor, we can probably carry on and not worry about it too much and see where those products go, at least for the next couple of years. That's that's my thoughts anyway but yeah we do segue on can to, i just uh, can i just interrupt the segue yeah. i'm gonna because i want to work <laughs> for give wp because if you work for give wp <laughs> somebody comes up behind you and gives you coffee <laughs> and it was fresh ground too i mean oh, i really can't complain you just stop that was so nice it was so nice you just sort of snuck in and wait, wait, he like, oh, it was lovely he, he appreciates me so much he actually microwaves the cream so that it doesn't make my coffee cold so oh. i really I work with really, really good people. So yeah, thank that's you for nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I, so I've completely interrupted the segue, Paul, but I'll, I'll return it to you <laughs> in the hope that you can salvage something from it. Yeah, absolutely. So the, 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 the segue was that we were talking about the block editor. But um, this, the next one is probably two articles, uh, starting with Automatic is uh, launches something called the Blank Canvas WordPress theme, hmm. which is for WordPress.com not wordpress.org so wordpress.com is like the website as a service it's kind of it's a little bit like lead pages or wix or squarespace so you sign up to wordpress.com and you're in that um, environment so this is interesting to me because 
this blank canvas, it, it has nothing in it, really. It's just completely blank, apart from it ships with a bunch of um, block patterns. And the use case that you've got for it is kind of small funnels, uh, single page sign up pages, those kind of pages that you have linked off your Instagram profile that's got all your different links on. So it might be um, something that I see a lot of my clients using is tools like lead pages that they use for this, or even things like uh, some of the email systems like um, Convert Convert Kit yep. uh, has these kind of functionality as well, but they're actually quite difficult to use. And they cost a bit of money as well. So WordPress.com, you can buy an account with WordPress.com from £3 a month, right? So you can buy an account with £3 a month. You can install this theme if you are, let's say, a, a life coach or something like that, and you've got a little landing page that you want to do. And you can create a very quick landing page, a thank you page, hook it up to something like MailChimp or some other free option. And you've got yourself a little funnel system there for three pounds or whatever it is in dollars, probably three dollars, four dollars a month. You look at some of the alternatives to that, like lead pages, click funnels, they cost a small fortune. Even if you look at something like Elementor's cloud system, that is going to cost a lot more because really you're paying for all sorts of hosting there. So mm. They're not making a big deal about this launch, but it. what's lacking here really is just a really hardcore marketing campaign to aim at those people that do buy the single page websites because £3 a month, $4 a month. Why really do you cheap. think they're not making a big deal out of it? I, I think that they're not quite ready, in my hmm. opinion. I think that they're... They're creating all this, you know, they're, they're creating all this infrastructure at automatic. They've got the block editor, you know, we're getting built for them on the um, on the .org project. Um, at the, the only, I think the only cost of automatic have is that they do employ a lot of people who work full time on that project. So they dedicate a lot of hours there. I think they're putting all the pieces together slowly, you know, uh, testing the waters. I mean, Matt Mullenweg is the CEO, obviously, of... Um, of automatic and uh it was matt medeiros the other day who mentioned to us that if you check out uh matt mullenweg's um his twitter profile hmm. let's see if we can find it here his little snippet of text below his name is i can think i can wait i can fast and i think by fast he means like the eating type but on a more psychological level so i don't think they're in a rush They've got tons of money. There's no need. There's no need to rush this stuff out. They've got tons of investment. They've got all the time in the world to figure it out and get themselves in the right position. And then at some point, I think Automatic are going to absolutely go for it in the next couple of years, and we're just going to see a real push against some of these commercial products like ClickFunnels and lead pages and because Wix the and reason, all these things. The reason I ask is because you've got to think that another commercial company, if they produced a thing like this, they would just you know, they'd spray out an email and make a big deal out of it and do a big marketing launch for something, you know, a revolutionary little side product, if you like. I just wonder if they uh, they were feeling the heat from the last couple of weeks where <laughs> the, you know, the, the website building service that they were offering for basically $5,000. I wonder if the pushback from that has, has made them rain in the marketing. That is pure speculation. I've no idea. Perhaps. Mm. Mm. Um, okay. The other, the other article. If anyone, has anyone got anything they want to mention on, on that at all? Nope. Um, so, in a kind of contrasting uh, related way, uh, Elementor three point one um, is launching. Let me just check. Is that a beta or is that a full launch? Is that a beta launch? Uh, I can't remember with this one. Not sure. Okay. So anyway, there's a new version of Elementor coming out. It's trying to address some issues around accessibility and performance. Um, not to a great extent, you read through the article, uh, which is on the Elementor.com blog. It's version 3.1. So they're, they're addressing a couple of small um, things, low-hanging fruit around uh, asset loading, accessibility, and DOM improvements, as they say. But the interesting thing to me, again, is the landing page builder that they've improving here. So they've now put a whole section within Elementor called landing pages. And it means that if you are just using Elementor just to create something similar to what we were literally just talking about on WordPress.com, 
that you've got your own kind of section now called landing pages and the workflow is set up around the kind of people who are looking to create one or two or a three page flow of landing pages. So again, they, we know that Elementor are launching a cloud version. This landing page system seems to fit perfectly with that. So mm -hmm. it does look like a lot of people uh, well, a lot of people, as in two companies, uh, Automatic and Elementor, are both looking at those mom and pop companies and saying, these companies need quick, simple solutions to get their products online, get conversions. And it looks like they're both going in the same direction. So Elementor and Automatic definitely are head to head to some extent. I'm guessing that the, the Elementor option is a bit broader in terms of what you can do. Um, whereas the automatic Absolutely. one is, is just yeah. one one theme and you can style it with the current blocks that are available, whereas Elementor yeah. comes packed with a bunch of different rows and modules and so on and so forth. Well, they've yeah. got opposing opposing problems. They start they're both starting on from, from two different angles. Elementor has got a solution which does everything. But they've got accessibility problems and they've got performance problems and they've got stability problems. Whenever you update, even in this article, it will say, if you update the Elementor plugin now, update everything else first, take a backup. So now there is a new workflow officially advised from Elementor, which is to update everything else apart from Elementor first. Now, what if another plugin starts telling you to do that? What are you supposed to do? It's you have, to, uh, you, you have to have a fight. What, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, so they've got that problem, whereas Automatic have got that their stuff doesn't do much. It is, you know, you can create this absolutely basic page. But Matt Mullenweg, you know, he can think, he can wait, and he can fast. He's in <laughs> no rush. Elementor, venture capital, investors need to make some money, need to make some money back on that investment. So it's interesting to see which direction both, both these products will go and what we end up in each side. Mm. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, Bernard, Michelle, anything on that? Not really. The only thing that uh, always comes up to me if we're talking about all those templates, I always think, okay, they're in English. They're useless to me. Ah, I mean, come on. Yes, of it's, course. It's, 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 it, it's not that a huge part of the world doesn't speak English, but there are so many communities, even even very large, which have different language issues. Um, most of those templates are just, English, there's no version, no translated version, no whatever. Um, and that's the thing, uh, it, 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 it happens more often than not that uh, the, the things are done in English and the rest is very, very poor. And it's difficult and I understand that. Uh, but I wonder when people start to, to niche down a little bit and say, okay, we have templates for our German speaking French or Spanish or Chinese or whatever. There are enough languages which are on par with English for 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 native speakers at least. So it's it's interesting. It's it's it's, it's, it's uh, yeah. Well, that's and it's an issue in my eyes. Yeah, you've got to imagine that the the WordPress side of things will have to take that more seriously because of the the constraints of what they've sort of signed up for. You know, accessibility is a a fundamental part there's a team yep. de um, dedicated just to that okay michelle should we move on or are you have you got something you want to i was add? just gonna pop in and say that I, i've been thinking a lot about the conversations around freelancing and that the, the easier that wordpress becomes the less likely somebody will need a freelancer but then i also remember that when i was freelancing people would say can you build this with wix can you build this with Weebly? Could you use Squarespace to build this? And so the need for freelance um, will always be there. It's just, it just dep depends on how you market yourself in the freelance community and what your services are. Just because somebody can build a website doesn't mean they should. I probably could figure out how to nail things together and make a house, but I wouldn't want to live in it. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> That's a great example. And, and one thing is for sure, even if it's possible, WordPress has gotten very complex over the years because you have the customers and you have widgets and now you have Gutenberg and you have uh, uh, much more needs in kind of accessibility and you need search optimization and you need security and mm -hmm. there is a whole bunch of stuff going on 
And uh, that's the reason why hosting companies now start to prepackage WordPress and add all add many features yeah. for you. And it's I think yes. there will always be room for people helping out others. <laughs> Absolutely, there's a there's a, um, a company that's a it's a feminist company, and I volunteered to help them out. And if they had any web questions, it turns out they're on Wix, and they had no clue how to use it. I didn't know how to use it, but I have web experience, and so through my volunteering from them, I was able to set up their fundraising, their shop, their online store, and things like that because there will always be a need for people who understand these things better than the people mm. who are doing them. And when your core competency is being a painter, then you want somebody else to build your website because you want to make money painting. So there's that. Good point. Yeah. Okay. Right. Bit of a bit of a, well, we can't segue into the next one. Let's just, <laughs> let's just go straight to it. This I is, um, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, never. This is another WP Tavern article. This, time i think the last one might have been just notice sarah yeah anyway we're with sarah gooding again plugin team draws a line plugins must not change wordpress default automatic update settings now possibly a bit of a, a storm in a teacup but um I, i'm going to read the the verbatim piece which comes off the the wordpress plugin team's statement and it says unless your plugin has the purpose of managing updates you must not change the default of wordpress's update settings you may offer a feature to auto update, but it has to honor the core settings. This means if someone has set their site to never update any of my plugins or themes, you are not to change those um, for them unless they opt in and request it. So just to add some context, this is a fairly new feature in WordPress. It's a feature that because I've got a third party solution, in my case, main WP that I use to update everything, I've left everything switched off. In other words, don't auto update. I'll just do that myself. But quite a handy feature. Now, if you go into the plugin settings, there's a column at the far right, which allows you to toggle on or off uh, auto update. Strikes me as a really useful feature, especially if you're rarely in there. Um, you know, you don't open the admin much, but you'd like to make sure that it's as safe as possible. Now, it would appear, and I am going to be very careful to caveat or couch this a little bit in that we don't know, but Sarah is drawing a comparison, shall we say, with something that happened in December 2020 where the all-in-one SEO plugin turned on automatic updates without notifying its users. And so there has been, in the past, an example of at least one company or plugin manufacturer flipping the switch in the opposite direction than the user set up. So in other words, you say, don't automatically update, and yet somehow the update to the plugin creates the possibility for them to update themselves. Now, I don't know how serious this is. To me, it's a bit of a storm in a teacup. But nevertheless, if you don't want things auto-updating, for which there might be genuine bona fide reasons, then the rules are now clear. If you're a plugin developer, leave well alone. Uh, you're straying into dangerous waters. Um, and so just, just honor what the person has set up. If they want things auto-updating, they can go and figure that out for themselves. Um, maybe there's a choice to offer that. But anyway, there we go. This is the state of play right now. Seems like a, like I say, a bit of a storm in a teacup, but probably something that needed straightening out so that the opposite didn't happen. Things were, I don't know, turned off from automatic update as opposed to being turned on. I will open the floor to anybody that wants to comment. And the I floor is empty. No, it's yeah. fair enough. It's not a. It's not it, a big. It's big pretty piece. straightforward. Yeah. 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 It was worth mentioning there. Okay. Mm -hmm. In which case, we'll go to um, company which we mention fairly frequently. I'm handing this the baton over to Paul so that we can talk about tool set. Yeah. So I think um, interested to hear what Bernard has to say about this one as well. As Bernard, seeing as you're um, associated with pods and work with that, so tool set blocks. 1.4. I think toolset is now toolset blocks. Is that right, Nathan? As far as you know. No, I think toolset block. Yeah, you, you could be right, but the logo just says toolset at the top mm. of the page and the URL <laughs> is still toolset.com. So I think toolset blocks is their their block initiative, if you know what I mean. But if anybody's watching from toolset, Amir, reach out, correct us. So anyway, well, what you can do um this this particular update on the toolset blog is talking about toolset blocks 1.4 brings dynamic sources and inline fields to popular block plugins. So from what I understand, the core toolset blocks 
previously did allow you to connect, for instance, live data to different fields. So let's say you wanted to automatically pull in the date of a blog post or the title of a blog post or the content or something else or a custom field or something like that, you could do that. And I think what this article is mostly about is that they're now supporting a bunch of other block packs. And I think the ones that they are mentioning are stackable, mm -hmm. Genesis blocks, ultimate add-ons with Gutenberg, and also the WordPress core blocks. And they're probably going to look at doing some other ones as well. So they're making their, their uh, toolset product extend other people's products further so that it's kind of better integrated. So for anyone who doesn't know what a tool set is, it's a kind of framework where you can create custom fields, custom post types, custom taxonomies, and get that kind of relational database effect going on with your website. So you can use it, for instance, to do things like develop uh, directories or um, search engine based websites and uh, those, those kind of things where you have more of a database query and returning archives and stuff like that kind of view. It's extremely powerful plugin. Um, and I have to say, seeing as we're talking about blocks are quite a lot these days, is that the way they've handled their integration with blocks and how they're using the blocks and, and loops of blocks to create grids and stuff like that is very impressive. And it is worth taking a look at for anyone who wants to see how the block editor could be done really well. Um, we have also uh, to talk about, um, we mentioned last week, uh, Pods is launching its Pods Pro thing via S, um, SKC Dev, I think yeah. is it, which is Scott Kingsley Clark uh, Devout Dev. And from what I understand, I know that the new versions of Pods is also bringing in uh, some blocks that again allow you to do this kind of thing similar to what Toolset does as far as I can tell. So I don't know, Bernard, if you can uh, confirm that or not. Is that right that Pods is starting to become more of a visual tool in the next series of updates? I mean, uh, it's not that easy. I mean, that's a whole other discussion. Yes, uh, there is those uh, the pro add-ons which would make things easier, similar like we do it for Beaver Builder. So Scott is working on doing it for for uh, DV and others, uh, and it's always the same problem, which is tools that uh, trying to solve too. And I solved it for Beaver Builder using those field connections or dynamic data because pods and uh, tools and others are more about structured data. So you, for example, you have a book or I don't know a car, and you want to store more information about it, and you know it's always the same information. So we have, I don't know, we have the, the manufacturer of the car and you have the wheel size and you have the power of the motor. And then you have a table where all those information sits and then you want to output it all in the same way. And Gutenberg currently doesn't really have a way to do it. I mean, there are dynamic blocks mm -hmm. for dealing with kind of the post loop, but you have a single view of the, of the single car, then you don't have those kind of connections uh, Beaver Builder calls them field connections, uh, Toolset calls them now uh, dynamic connections or I think dynamic sources. I don't know how Elementor calls it, but it's always the same concept to kind of link a template like a blueprint and to fill out like a, like a form uh, and then to just print it out with those form informations to make it a little bit clearer for people who didn't work with that stuff. And... Uh, that's kind of the, the idea behind it. Uh, we are working on integration with uh, um, Gutenberg 2, but it's not in that state like Toolset uh, because uh, first we have to lay the groundwork with 2.8, which is in, in a kind of alpha state. So you can go out, check it out on, on the POTS GitHub rep rep repository. There is the 2.8 release branch and many stuff is already working, like the new interface for creating fields, uh, then we have now the groups for fields, so you can group your fields. Um, this has been in pods since many releases, but there was no user interface for it. Now you mm -hmm. can have a user interface, just group your fields and say if you want the sidebar or below it, so stuff like that works already, and others. And it lays the groundwork for, for repeating fields in the future, like we have now relationships, which is uh, uh, pods was the first 
tool to really have relationships. So like you can have, I don't know, you have the manufacturer of the car and you have the car and you can say, okay, these cars are from this manufacturer and you can connect stuff. And it's like uh, taxonomies and steroids or I don't know, mm. kind of. Yeah? And uh, we have now different ways to output that stuff. Uh, and, and, and that's 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 uh, will become even more powerful. Uh, for example, that's one of the things Pot Scott is working with his pro add-ons to store relationship information with the pod itself and not in a separate database table to make exporting and importing easier or working on it or doing advanced stuff. So it's it's kind of the reason why he, he, he laid the groundwork for Pods Pro to have an, an, an playground and to have, add stuff to it and motivate people to not to donate to Pods itself. So if you're, because that was a question last week, I think how this works, calculation works. For right. So basically you can either pay Scott directly per year and uh, he, he uses the money to do the same stuff uh, or you can donate to POTS itself. And in the end, you get a benefit from him in, in the same amount because you have to at least donate 60 dollars per year then you get his uh, plugins discounted by 60 dollars so it's just left the right pocket but feel free to donate more to pots of course yeah uh, <laughs> and for existing users who have supported pots before all that existed uh, you only have to have been doing a lifetime donation of 60 dollars so everybody who donated up to 60 dollars before i think first of november last year you can go just get pots pro for fifteen dollars per month, uh, per year. Sorry, <laughs> and uh, it, it, it counted as a lifetime donation because we wanted to to give back to people who supported pots before it without any additional benefit. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. We did stray into the subject of how the pricing went. We thought it was quite an interesting model. The idea that you could uh, you could sort of like get money back. It's like a payback for being a, a good a good citizen in the pods universe at some point. Just to clarify, Peter, thank you in the comments mentioned that tools tool set blocks replaces tool set views. Views was their dynamic query tool and is still supported, but blocks is meant to be uh, to make it much more easy. So basically, I think you can build views within the block editor and it's called tool set blocks. So when you add a tool yep. set view in you can construct it right there. You don't have to go off to a different UI. Yeah. It, just interesting, going back to the article, I just wonder, because Toolset are now supporting these blocks um, packages, so they, they've begun with stackable Genesis blocks, ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg, and obviously the WordPress core ones. I wonder if we're about to enter a new era of fragmentation where, <laughs> you know, you've, you've, you've got all of these different rival block packs of which you can only imagine there's going to be more um and you know if it doesn't cover in this case as yet obviously there's things like cadence is not mentioned just as one example uh does that mean that tool set are now going to be forever running around trying to figure out which is the most successful or on the rise pack of blocks and trying to interview their field connectors with the blocks? If you watch this video, you'll get an idea of what we're on about because uh, down here they show um, exactly how it works. And so they take a stackable block, which is already pre-configured to look really nice out of the block, and they just say, put the title of the post here put the excerpt here, make this the background image. And it's you don't have to think, but you don't get a great deal of customization. You get what Stackable gives you and alter the alter the fields accordingly. So perhaps a new era of fragmentation. That, yeah, and, and I think sites will get more fragile because what if Cadence or whatever tool is supported updates their stuff? I mean, right. that's nothing new. We have integrations like pods into Beaver Builder, it's the same because we integrate it and take care of it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm always a little bit have, have my difficulties with Gutenberg because the field stuff should have been sourced before, like give us a groundwork how to store data within WordPress. It, it's there, it's the custom field, but there is no API, no standardized way how to store that data. So every plugin can access the data. 
because one stores it as text, the other ones is just a serialized array, whatever. And uh, uh, if there would have been at least a basic understanding of how, how fields are stored, we could have exchanged some plugins with you, for example, switch out pods with ACF or others, uh, just take care of the, 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 the minimum stuff. I mean, part of it works if you're talking about number fields or text fields, that's the easy stuff. But if they had added the fields API and Scott Clark was working, working on a proposal to add a fields API to WordPress, uh, but it never went through and there were so many objections and stuff. So he finally gave up on it and worked more on pods itself. Uh, but if we have this groundwork, each block could define, define, okay, I'm a field connections, give me stuff. And then nobody would have to work around it. I didn't look uh, in the details how tools that does it, but, like, but I can imagine it's a little bit of fragile stuff that you need to parse the field and inject the stuff and whatever. Um, it's, I don't know. I still hope that at the one point Gutenberg will add that stuff to make it more easy for, for not only blog posts or new new style posts, because Gutenberg is very great for any 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 news sites or just content, but not if you have a little bit more structured stuff. In our um in our regular little chat that Paul and I have on a Friday where we talk about what we're going to talk about. Uh, I think I think tools are doing great with all this stuff. I think they're really pushing a lot of boundaries here, um, making a lot of this accessible to people who don't code in a really a really nice looking format. But also, again, totally off to one side. I I like their website. I like their blog posts. I like the way they look. <laughs> I think they're doing a great job with their PR. I like purple yes. on white. <laughs> That's what. <it> is. <laughs> Anything to add here, Michelle, or should we let Paul take the next one? Yep, keep moving on. It's all looking good. I love the keep conversation. <laughs> okay, Paul, back to you. Yeah, the next one we got is um, a little plugin called Launch with Words. This is an article featured on WordPress Tavern by Justin Tadlock. And the article is called Jumpstart a Year's Worth of Content via the Launch with Words plugin, which I think is a great name for a plugin for starters. Um, <laughs> this plugin is created by, um, or the person behind this plugin is Bridget Willard, who is somebody who a lot of lot of us know in the community, super nice person. Um, uh, this Bridget is a lot of fun and gives out a lot of content and a lot of, uh, a lot of free advice for, via her channels. And from what I understand, she has an ebook of some sort. And what this ebook ebook is about is how to start writing blog posts for the next 12 months. So it's kind of like a, a framework or a blueprint for 12 months worth of blog posts. Apologies if I've got that wrong, but that's that's what I've gathered from the plugin landing page. Now, what happens with this plugin is you install the plugin. And it pretty much just chucks into your WordPress post section 12 draft posts. And when you open up one of those posts, let's say you open up the one called January, it will be a guide to what you could write about this month. Okay, so your January post is always going to be something about the new year and what your plans are and what your plans are for your customers or something like that. So you open up the blog post, you delete the notes as you work through the through the guide of how you write one blog post. And when you're done, you hit publish. And I think what is cool about this is that I feel this is quite a creative way to launch a plugin in that, of course, this could be a blog post. You could just read it and it could be a download or something like that. But she's going one step further and saying, install this and we'll even put the drafts in WordPress for you. So if you are the person saying, oh, you know what, I want to do some blogging. But oh, you know, I'm not going to get around to it. If you install that plugin, you've then got to make a decision to delete the draft post that she more or less put on a plate for you. So you've got to have a really good excuse to, you know, or, or every time you're like, well, there's 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 March deleted. Oh my gosh, I suck. I'm not even, you know, I didn't do January. I didn't do February. I didn't do March. She's not looking for plugin installs here. Uh, she actually even recommends you may as well delete the plugin after you've installed it and it's added the blog post. But I think it's a lovely way to get, um, whether it's for yourself or for your clients, to get uh, content into your blog that you can work through and then launch some content, which is on more or less anyone's 
list of a website owner. It does. She does always say. Does also say that she's possibly planning some add-ons uh, for niche types of content. So maybe the um, tradesperson or something like that, or a, a mom and pops type business, something in different niches to help with those different blog posts. So I like yeah, it. You, and F. Can... Lars Livingston says she's going to evaluate Bridget's plugin. Uh, there you go. Just obliterated your head again, Paul. Sorry about that. There we go. That's better. Thanks. Um, that's the I should say for people listening to the audio, uh, the comments always c cover up the face of the person at the bottom of the stack. And uh, in this case, it's Paul. So sorry about that. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Beth. Nice comment. The You kind of feel that the value here is is in the things that she comes up with in the future. You know, I, I do like the idea of the 12 months of posting throughout the year, but uh, you can sort of see, I don't know, um, somebody in a particular niche dropping their own content in and giving you the giving you the the kick up the backside if you like it creates yeah. the 12 15 100 posts that you needed um gives you some framework and i'm not very good at structuring my writing so just having that structure to hang things on you know you go in write the accompanying paragraph that that accompanies what bridget suggested and then delete her paragraph and move on to the next one and Hopefully, keep the momentum going that way. Yeah, just an interesting, an interesting little project. I like that. That's, That's cool. right. There's, there is, there is a, you know, for anyone who hasn't written blog posts before, there is a way that if you follow it, it's not too difficult. You know, you start by telling, so you start with a grab, you know, a, a nice title, and then you tell people what they're going to learn. You, you bust a myth or something like that, and, and um, oh. Bridget is actually in the comments. That's yeah. Bridget. Bridget. Bridget's Hello, one Bridget. of those people that hasn't pressed the StreamYard button. If you press the, go to the top of the comments, Bridget, uh, sorry, top of the thread, click the StreamYard link, then we can see your name. But uh, anyway, sorry. So, yeah, so the this reminds me of Carl Van Dusen's um, plugin. Docket WP. Uh, Docket WP. That's exactly also what I was thinking. Yeah, Andre Gagnon as well is, yep. is also the co-creator of that plugin. Um, it reminds me of that because Docket WP puts lists like to-do lists inside your WordPress dashboard. So it right. might be, you know, the the WordPress list to to do your security setup or your or something else. SEO um, or something, yeah. Yeah, to how to you know remember to set these things up before you launch the website kind of thing. So this this feels like a, I could see a. Uh, Bridget and Kyle and Andre doing a bit of a collaboration here. That would be kind of cool. But yeah. yeah, it's good. It's just helping people create content and um, holding holding yourself to account if you install the plugin, really. Yep. Yep. That's nice. Um, there, there ought to be a, instead of the delete button, there should be a delete with shame button. Mm -hmm. Just overwrite that and uh, <laughs> Absolutely. You feel, feel slightly <laughs> less compelled to, to click it and <laughs> more likely to write. That's a nice piece. Okay. Now, going from something positive to something possibly alarming, certainly not the kind of thing we want to talk about, but it's necessary to talk about. This is the WordFence 2020 WordPress threat report. I mean, we really could dig into the weeds here, and obviously WordFence are one of the, the, the biggest companies in the WordPress space dealing with hardening and securing and firewalling your WordPress website. And so that gives them a, a great insight in each year into what's going on. And frankly, the numbers are terrifying in some respects. So the the takeaways are, now, I should say, I've no idea how much of this is automated bots. It doesn't really matter to me because, you know, the effect could still be the same. 90 billion malicious password login attempts. I mean, you, you literally can't even like, try to imagine what 90 billion of anything actually looks like. It, how many a second does that equate to? I don't know how many seconds there are in a year, but I'm sure it's not 90 billion. Um, so this is happening a lot. And then it goes on. So it provides the problem, and then they suggest a sort of takeaway. And they're, they're basically saying, for this one, get yourself some multi-factor authentication uh, process. They actually have WordFence have a free tool in the WordPress repo just for that purpose. That's all they. That's all the free plugin does is allows you to have a, a, a second step to authenticate yourself. Four point three billion vulnerability exploits attempts. Uh, sorry, four point three billion vulnerability exploit attempts targeting WordPress. So that's it. That is to say, their firewall block that many, which is coming from nine point nine point seven unique IP addresses. I mean, 
how big is the IP space? That must be quite a bit of it. Um, and and it breaks up those attacks into f five common vectors, directory traversal attacks, SQL injections, malicious file uploads intended to achieve remote code execution, cross-site scripting, and authentication bypass. And the takeaway is use a firewall. Obviously, you know, this is... To some extent, it's very helpful information. On the other hand, it's also providing their uh, a nice a nice way to to introduce you to their own service. Um, and there's a whole Nathan, bunch of other stuff. Yeah, I just want to say I just did a little bit of math, and 90 billion seconds is over 2,000 years. So definitely, <laughs> definitely <laughs> more than a few a second. Absolutely. Yeah. If you've ever sat watching your your firewall logs as they're happening and your site is under attack, I was watching uh, I was watching one of my sites, the Cloudflare blocking the other day, and it was it was probably 10,000 every 40, 50 seconds. It was absolutely bonkers the numbers yeah. that were going through. I really could ba barely take it in. Um, yeah, and remember, but, these numbers are just what WordFence has caught, so that yeah. doesn't take into account any other yeah. security yeah. plugins. Just WordFence. Exactly. Uh, just WordFence. Yes. WordFence. So triple, yeah. quadruple. Don't know what the number is, but um, exactly. anyway, the, the point is they've thrown together this nice article. This feels like the perfect hammer that you can use against your website care plan clients who are, who are who are wavering who are about to walk away you can produce this look at these scary numbers have you any idea how many 90 billion is well that's coming down on you if you don't sign up to our care plan or install this plugin and blah 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 anyway just absolutely bonkers numbers one slightly cool thing that happened this week and i don't know where we're going to go with this i don't know if we'll ever um make any use of this but during the course of this week, WordFence, and we mentioned it last week, WordFence decided that they would offer a free cleanup service for K-12. Is that is there a thing? Is it K-12, Michelle? Is that how they call schools? And Yeah. That's okay. what we call it, kindergarten through high school, yes. Okay. So they were, WordFence were going to clean up. Is that right? Was it clean up? Yes, it was. It was clean up for free. And, uh, and so... I don't know quite how it happened, but Kathy Zant and I ended up having a conversation in which she said, um, we can do that in the UK as well, if you like. So if you are in any way connected to a UK school, um, maybe you're a governor or I doubt you're a teacher because you probably should be doing something else rather than listening to this at this moment in time, um, reach out. You can either reach out to me in the Facebook group or Kathy Zant at WordFence, and she said they'd offer the same thing. It was quite interesting because Tim Nash in our Facebook group pointed out that that might not be possible under UK law. There might be some problem with with allowing WordFence access. So caveat emptor. I don't know if that's the case, but it was a it was a blooming nice thing for them to offer anyway off the off the bat of that. So I was very pleased with that. So that's yeah, me done with the scary pretty... stuff. Uh, it, it isn't that scary. I mean, if you take a little bit of care, it's fairly easy to secure your WordPress site. Uh, it doesn't matter which solution you're using, WordFence or Sukuri or WebAx or Hall, they call them. If you use sensible passwords and not one, two, three, four, five, six, or stuff like that, and most of WordPress hacks are just, are just a little bit of file injection or something like that. Mm. Uh, and the, the scary thing is it's, it's so easy to do it or to try it out because just go to build with, get the list of WordPress sites, yeah. write a little script. Uh, you find it online. There are so many options and just run it via your site. And if you haven't, uh, I don't know, a little bit of login protection or don't update your plugins. Uh, and then it's, it's fairly easy to get in, uh, but it's fairly easy to keep people out. I, some people sometimes they tell people it's like leaving your key at your door makes for sure it easier for people to get in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you close your door and shut it down and have a key with you, uh, it becomes much more difficult to get into your house. So yeah. it's it's not that scary, but it's it's you you need for sure to take care of it because uh, if somebody wants to get in and has an idea what he's doing. Uh, WordPress or others uh, might not be sufficient because if the website of the Pentagon can be can get hacked, it's it's a matter of uh, time and dedication to throw it aside and you find a way in. I'm quite mm -hmm. sure most of the time, 
on any level from the server to your application to or to whatever. So it's, 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 but nobody really does that because your site is just um it's just not worth it because they want to add some spam to your site and whatever uh, and add it to their bot network. So it's if you can't get if they can get easy in, then you get hacked. If it's hard, then you must yep. have, have for sure upset upset someone with the right skills. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Not that scary. Just make sure you're doing all the right things and take some backups, please, everybody. Make sure. Yes, back, back it up. Then at least you've got somewhere to go if the worst does happen. Why do people spend their time doing this stuff? It's just really remarkable. Um, there's also, you know, you can just buy this stuff off the shelf as a SaaS service if you want. Well, yeah, I, I don't know quite what the URLs are, and I wouldn't tell you if I knew. But uh, <laughs> I know that you can just buy a package of malware injection um, or a packet of, you know, package for infecting WordPress websites and taking them over. Good grief. What a world we live in. Um, if you're a security engineer, you need to know how these things work. I remember I was when I was university back when I graduated in 20, 20 actually, no, 20, 20, zero, 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 in 2000. <laughs> I did the last part of my dissertation on web security and I bought a book called Web Security and it came with a CD-ROM on the back which had more or less all the main hacking tools included on there. This was just a regular book that you buy in the shops. I mean, it came with a, yes. you know, a, a kind of warning: don't actually use these tools. Don't put this in your computer. Just but look at here it. Here they are. <laughs> yeah, here they are. This is how they work. This is how you can see how they're going. I think um, uh, talking about security and also um, Nathan's um, scaremongering selling tactics that he uses with his care plan clients to tell them you know, how their websites are going to get hacked. Oh, good. It did remind me of a little bit of drama this last week with uh, Jetpack. I don't know if any of you saw this. I know Bridget no. saw it because I can see her in uh, Twitter talking about it. Um, so there was a, a, a kind of notice. A, it was another controversial notice in the dashboard. This time it was Jetpack, who were obviously owned by Automatic. And the, the notice said, Jetpack, Adding plugins can expose your site to security risks. Stay one <laughs> step ahead of threats with automated malware scanning and one-click fixes. So then there's a get jetpack scan, which obviously when you click that, it's going to cost you some money to buy that particular service. So there was a bit of, um, I, I call it drama because, you know, that's it was kind of a, a kind of dramatic um, thing that uh, some people reacted to. I think it's wrong. I don't think Jetpack should put scare tactics in and be able to put those announcements in and have it funneling through to their paid services. Um, but uh, they were called out on it by a number of people. Hmm. They changed the wording. And they, they, they claimed that, you know, it wasn't a big thing. Uh, you know, it wasn't like trying to scare people into it. But yeah, it was another announcements in the dashboard drama so I, I really hope this announcements in the ja dashboard drama gets sorted out at some point in the core that would be that would, i'd like to see that on the the, <laughs> the, the 5.8 roadmap yeah that's yeah, right yeah can yeah. we replace number three that i didn't understand with that one and that, that was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay yeah yeah, yeah the, 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 the to tools the tools for contributors forget it we just want to get rid yeah. of the admin nags what does that mean yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> I was doing a screen share with a customer the other day and I was telling them that it would be at the top of the page. And then I realized that the top of the page was actually at the bottom of the screen because of all of the announcements <gasps> that were showing on their exactly. dashboard. You know, things yeah. like the plugins being out of date and not connected to, you know, things like that. But I was like, well, normally it's at the top. <laughs> Once you clear all those notifications. Yes. Uh, we don't make it easy for ourselves. Um, <laughs> for sure. We got a couple more bits to go. I'm going to rush through this one because I want to get to um, I want to get to the piece which uh, Michelle has brought along for the ride. Um, but first of all, I'm just going to mention this one. If you're using Facebook ads, I'm sure we've mentioned this before. Uh, this is over on TechCrunch. If you're using Facebook ads, it may be that things are about to get a lot harder because we've definitely mentioned this before. Apple are about to switch on. Maybe they've done it already. I don't know the date. They're about to switch on um, the fact that in iOS, which I'm guessing is in huge 
you know, I'm imagining it's in the 20s or 30s percent of all internet traffic. If you if you want to track something in iOS, so Facebook is the obvious example because it does a lot of advertising based around tracking and following you around. From now, you will have to give consent for that. So the the pop up will come up basically saying, "Do you want to be tracked?" and um, and I reckon in just about every case, I will say no. I can think of very few examples where my default is going to be, yes, please track me. Um, and so, as you'd imagine, this is, a real, this is a real feather in the cap of Apple's security model. It positions them as, as a real difference, for example, between the carrier of an Android phone and the carrier of an, an Apple phone. But it puts them into conflict with a lot of people. Uh, in this case, we're looking at a picture of Tim Cook shouting and Mark Zuckerberg listening. And um, and so Facebook are going to be really upset about this. They're pivoting it and trying to sort of make out that the ad platform is used by millions of businesses to make their business successful. So rather than saying it's going to hurt Facebook's bottom line, they're using the angle, well, it's going to hurt small business, which is intriguing. Yes, that's probably true, but I'm not entirely sure that Facebook is all about small business. Um, I don't know. I should probably I, shut up now because their lawyers will get me. <laughs> can, can I say about this photo though? Is that is that um, you know Tim Cook looks like he's yelling "Get off my lawn," and yeah. and Zuckerberg is yelling back, "It's everybody's lawn." Yeah, yeah. I, I really don't know what to make of this because I see this as a positive, but I have that predilection. I don't have my business invested in Facebook ads. If I were to have my business invested in Facebook ads, this would be really a big deal for me. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys do. Um, I don't know if GiveWP, for example, use Facebook ads to, mm -hmm. you know, surface ads on the Facebook platform. And if so, have you looked into how you're going to manage when all of this kind of dries up a bit? I mean, we do use Facebook ads. I'm not on the marketing team, so I'm not sure about all of yeah. that, but I'll make sure yeah. that they see this article. Yeah, okay. Well, mm. okay. I don't have an iOS Keep phone in. anyway, so it's all moot. <laughs> well, I've, I've just ordered an iOS phone. It's coming tomorrow because my contract was up for okay. renewal and they promised I could get a nice new phone. So I went. Are you able to one. track the package as it arrives? Um, You'll have to take the you... box to Dude. track. It was a joke. It was a badly yeah, timed, I get, I get poorly it thought joke. <laughs> I, I, the answer was, is, was, but the, probably the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a funny joke, wasn't it, everybody? Thank you. Thank one. you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Just throw him yeah. a bone. <laughs> I think um, it's a good thing. I think uh, I used to really, you know, hate all these cookie pop-ups because they caused the business owners lots of problems that they didn't really understand. The more time that goes on, maybe I'm just getting old, um, I, I start to feel more um, passionate about data being protected but i like the idea that the device manufacturer is taking is taking the lead on this and going i don't care what the complications in the laws are here we're going to make our users know what's going on and i think the answer to this is if this gets annoying for users then as an iphone as, a, as a, someone using an iphone for instance i think the annoyance will not be directed at the iphone it will be directed at the people collecting your data right and i think that that's the right place that the 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 frustration should be directed at whereas i think um what what happens in in opposite to that is that when you're not aware that your data is getting collected and it pops up in some other place then you you're disconnected from who it was that followed you and told someone else that you were interested in buying a lawnmower yeah so i think this is good and i'd like to see more of this and quite honestly this affected my decision to get an iphone because like uh we said earlier me and nathan talk every friday about the articles that we're going to cover and we did have a chat about privacy and stuff like that on friday and then my phone popped up and said hey you can get a new phone do you want to stick with android or ios and i thought do you know what i am stuck with google i'm really in deep with google but at least i can stop one vector of attack from my yeah. private data. so <laughs> yeah I mean, plus to get a nice new phone, it was nothing to do uh, with that. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, come on, suck it up. It's got nothing to do with security. He just want an iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's always a, a difficult decision because 
tracking isn't bad per se. It's what happens with the data. It's like gunpowder can be used for good stuff, like blowing away road blocks, blocking a road or whatever. And it can be used to shoot people. Um, yeah, that's, I, I, I do know what you mean, but I kind of think that in any scenario apart from the digital space, if somebody was following you around, you would be <laughs> no, totally yeah. freaked out. You, there would be nothing acceptable about that. If there was a person that you didn't know who was every time you turned your back, they were like 20 feet away, just staring at you, watching and making little yeah, notes, fine, turned but, a corner, but, went left, went right, paused for five seconds, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, what yeah, I think has happened is we've just right. allowed this to happen because there's been no oversight, because nobody saw this stuff coming. And now yeah. we're at the point where people are going, look, look what we've allowed to happen. We need to redress this. And so it's now a big deal. If we'd have had the, the insight to think this, this is a potential problem, we should block this at the beginning, we wouldn't be freaking out. Most people would have I just switched it off. people didn't realize it's an issue yeah. because I had often the discussion, oh, I don't care, I have nothing to hide, everybody mm -hmm. can know it. Yep. Um, yep. People willingly share stuff on Facebook, I think, oh my God, I'm all oh, the way, oh, I can wrap you, or I don't know, I have done this shit or that shit. And on the other hand, they are complaining about Facebook collecting data. So it's a very, very real world currently sometimes, yeah? Because the data can be used for good things, like to find right. trends, to find uh, problems, to find issues, to, to, because sometimes you need a large data set. But you know, on the other hand, if you can nail it down to one people individually, we've got big issues. And that's not about to know where you live, but it's about to what might your political opinions or uh, if in a few years uh, sometimes you don't get a job because, oh, you have been naughty as a young guy or whatever, or because with a percentage of 60%, you might get cancer because you have a lifestyle and then a company doesn't have offer you a job. So it's a very, very difficult situation we are in. And I have no idea how all those will play out in the long run because the data is already collected and stored somewhere because the net nobody forgets in the internet. Yeah. Well, if you're like me and have an Android phone, you're doomed. And if you're Paul Lacey <laughs> and you're getting yourself a nice new iPhone, you're fine. You'll live in some utopia. Um, yeah, but you have still a Mac or you have a PC or you have a tablet. I have a Mac, and, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and you have, uh, I don't know, health insurance and they collect data. Um, it, it doesn't stop with Facebook. Well, so I'm gonna, I, I, when I, this I, podcast is finished, I'm going to go and line a box with some <laughs> lead. <laughs> and I'm just going to go and sit in it. I'm just... <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm going to make, what's it called, a Faraday cage. I'm just going to create a yes. Faraday cage and sit in it and get po food passed through a letterbox. That, that's my ambition for 2021. That's like, Actually, that's, like... that's a good way to next week's show. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> it's like Skinner meets Faraday. It's got the Skinnerian <laughs> box, but it's lead-lined. <laughs> Honestly, 2021 was the year of the Faraday cage. This is the year we all <laughs> stayed inside and did nothing. Um, right, we're going to go to more positive things. Uh, Michelle, as always, incredibly busy. She's always doing something in the in the world of the internet and give WP got a couple of things happening this week i confess i don't know a lot about them so michelle we're starting with the one yeah. on the screen an so open invitation exciting. yeah so we have uh, we're using a, a system called or an online event called gather and so i don't know if you can scroll down you can see it's yeah it's, is this the eight bit thing yeah it gather is yeah. yeah gather yeah so we're having a hundred thousand celebration we have over a hundred thousand active installs right nice. now with give give wp um i've been with the company a little over three years now and you know really enjoy the, the work that i do with our customers so seeing so many people raising money all over the world using give is very exciting to me so we have over 100,000 active installs. That's the free plugin. Lots of people, of course, using our add-ons as well. But what you're seeing right now on screen, if you, if you can't see it, it, I will tell you, it's our San Diego office. So we've actually create, recreated our offices. You won't see on screen right now, but we've also created the New York office, the one I'm sitting in. So you can see it for real behind me right now, but you'll see it online if you join our 100,000 celebration. It is free to join. Just go to givewp.com. There's a link right in the header. Um, we're going giveaways. We're doing some fun things. Um, the sea shanty is very popular right now. <laughs> it really is, yeah. <laughs> I have written a sea shanty and uh, several of us are TikToking it as a duet. So we'll be able to actually, you'll be able to hear our sea shanty 
uh, for GiveWP, uh, as well as you can see, there's a lots of other plugins um, and people in the WordPress space that are giving away things for us as well. It's going to be quite the celebration. So it is this Friday. Um, go to GiveWP.com if you're interested uh, in joining us. We would love to have you there. That's a cool initiative. And just for a yeah. bit of fun, eh? it, it, this Gather Town thing is just so interesting. It's like yeah. a imagine going back to, I don't know, the late 90s or something no the early 90s <laughs> when you had a zx spectrum or a commodore 64 that that's that's what it's like but it's an online events platform yeah. based around moving these little eight, eight bit characters mm -hmm. around and when you when you approach somebody you start to hear their audio so the closer you get to them the louder their audio gets and as you move further away so you can literally back away from a conversation and it just just sort of goes away and you're it's very clever and also because it's 8-bit and it's not trying to be super-duper 3D AI, uh, sorry, augmented reality stuff, it, you just you just sort of get stuck into it a bit more. You know, you enter rooms and leave rooms. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah, and there was something else. What's this one? Yeah, so we actually have a new free add-on. Last year was the year of free add-ons for GiveWP. Uh, we launched lots of fun little things. One of them was an Elementor add-on so that you can use a GiveWP with Elementor blocks. And now we have included Divi as well. So last week we launched um, donation modules for Divi. So if you are a Divi user, and we know there are hundreds of thousands of sites using Divi, yeah. you can now mm. um, integrate Give very easily with our Divi blocks. So just go to our website, as I said, GiveWP. Um, and all of our free add-ons are, of course, in the repository. So you'll find them there on, on uh, WordPress.org as well if you just search for GiveWP. And, uh, yeah, so it's pretty exciting. We've got lots of really exciting things happening at Give, and uh, just super happy to be part of it. Thank you. Uh, I don't know why it is, but Divi just we, – we never seem to give time to Divi on this. <laughs> I, I don't know why Divi it is. User, you know, it's yeah. funny. I think that whatever um, page builder you use first – tends to be the one that you then stick with, especially if you've yeah. invested any any money in it. And so I've been using Divi for years. I love Divi, so it's exciting. I mean, I use the other ones too, of course, because I work with customers all over the world, but um, but kind of Divi kind of brings me home, you know? And so to see yeah. something um, with, like Divi, Elementor, those page builders, and then that we're able to be responsive and help our customers that way, it's pretty exciting. Very cool. So head over to um, GiveWP and check out the various things going on. That's yeah, really, really thanks. nice. I I feel like we've run out of things that we were going to talk about. I don't, there was one thing at the end, but I think I'm going to just drop that off because we're approaching an hour and a half, and really that's the that's the cutoff point. So um, I'm just going to say what I'm doing this week. Not a lot. I'm just going to be working on a couple of couple of different projects that I've got going on. What about you, Paul, Bernard, Michelle? Let's start with Paul. What's happening? Just just trying to find spots in the house to work. Really, to, uh, yeah. Everybody here. In, in the four of us today saw my little photo of I'm working at my daughter's <laughs> makeup table. This is this is this is why I've got good lights today. Uh, yeah, it's nice. So, yeah, you need to, you need to work here more the often. Next hour when she wants to come back up, I'll be demoted to the cupboard, Andre's Andre Gagnon's cupboard or something next. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. Bernard, what are you doing? Oh, not really planned that much. Uh, working on Oh, what stuff. a nice one. Uh, Oh, well, it always comes something come up comes up. Um, tomorrow I have some some stuff to do in in the city in Vienna. Um, yeah, playing around with new toys. Like we we got the uh, end of last year we got the uh, solar roof and an, an electric vehicle. So it's 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 funny uh, getting new things and statistics and say oh we produced uh, I don't know. 15 kilowatt hours in winter and I don't know how that much kilowatt hours went into our new cars. It, it's just funny to uh, do something good and to have a little bit of, I don't know why, it's just interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Graphs. Totally agree. <laughs> I completely agree. That's great. It's, it's, um, uh, yeah, don't, yeah. don't go out too much in the car, otherwise your heating will go off or something. You know, there'll be some <laughs> trade-off there, won't there? Yeah. <laughs> Charger. The car's ready to go, but we're freezing. Um, yeah. Peter Ingersoll in the comments has said he can't wait for your new website, Paul. You got some not a priority at the moment. Oh, okay. No. Okay. And I Michelle, enough, what about you? I, I got enough clients. That I don't. I don't want to. Uh, I try not good. to attract any new ones at the moment. So uh, <laughs> maybe I'll stay like, without a website. You're like the cobbler's children with no shoes. You're the web designer with no website. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty common Physician, thing. Heal Pretty thyself. Common. Um, so, Michelle, so, anything happen? Yeah. Well, in addition to all the stuff going on at Give, I'm also on the Big Orange Heart volunteer team. And this week we are doing our um, 
our debriefing about WordFest and what went well and looking at the feedback that we've gotten, as well as starting to plan the next one. And I'm going to put in a, a little plug here. So if you haven't gone to Big Orange Heart at all right now, you can get my book. There's my book, A Good Firm Handshake. It's definitely was written pre-COVID because nobody's shaking hands now. But <laughs> you can get <laughs> for any donation that you make through um, Big Orange Heart right now, you'll get a PDF download of my book, which is all about ways to um, move yourself forward in business. So um, I'm not making any money off it. I donated it uh, to be used for Big Orange Heart. Oh, that's so, so nice. Yeah. So I'm so yeah. So I'm not plugging it because it's my book. I'm plugging it because I think everybody um, should promote Big Orange Heart and the work that we do there for yeah. the remote work community. Well, I thoroughly agree. I wonder what we'd have called that book if we'd have known. Maybe like a a, a good <laughs> elbow bump or something. <laughs> you know, just, just I, like... I, <laughs> I, I'm starting to think about version two and like maybe like in lieu of the handshake or like bow and wave. I, I really haven't decided yet. <laughs> what about a, a good firm, well sanitized handshake? <laughs> Pithy to the point. It's eminently readable. Well, I'll just round up by saying thank you very much. Thank you to Bernard. Thank you to Paul. Thank you to Michelle for joining us again this week. We'll be back 2 p.m. UK time next week doing the this week in WordPress thing all over again. Until then. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having me.